Hi there. So before we get into this interview, I wanted to give a huge thanks to both Deep Silver and Dan Buster Studios for taking time out of their busy schedule and having a conversation with me. Myself and many members of the community vastly appreciate them doing so. Seriously, thank you. And to all the audience members that are watching for the first time, if you like this content and you want to see more content like this, please consider dropping a like and also a comment. When there's positive reception and feedback and engagement on videos like this, it makes it easier for me to go and set up more opportunities later down the road. So with all that said, let's Let's begin. I'm really excited for this. I'm not a morning person at all, and it's like 5 a.m. <laughs> for me right now. So I got up at like 4 to go and get this up and running. So I'm really excited. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Oni Zombies. I'm here today joined by James Worrell. He is the creative director for Dead Island 2 at Dan Buster Studios. James, how's it going? How's it? How are you feeling? <laughs> It's, it's going well. We're very excited. Obviously, we launched this week, so uh, you know everything's very busy. Everyone's very pumped, and uh, uh, we're all quietly confident. <laughs> I was going to say, is it is it a mixture of excited, nervousness? Where where are you and the team currently at right now? Um, a kind of mixture of all that and relief to finally be you know getting it out the door because you know at some point you just got to bite the bullet and get it out there. Um, um, and that's kind of how we felt when we launched at GamesCon as well. We'd been kind of sitting on it for such a long time. And then we sort of kind of surfaced like a, I, I always use the analogy that we kind of surfaced like a, a submarine that had been trailing the fleet, as it were. <laughs> and we went, hey, everybody, we're here. Um, and it was such it was such a great relief and such a great response from, you know, all the fans. But, you know, everyone there as well, et cetera. And um you know, that's when we released that that demo, which uh, you got your hands on at uh, PAX. Yes, I enjoyed it a lot. It was, it felt like more Dead Island, which I'm like really happy to see, because a lot of like what made the original really special was still kept in there. So like, how did how did you and the team tackle on making it feel like a proper sequel that cared for its original audience, but also open it up for newcomers too? Yeah, well, I mean that's the key with um, you know keeping IP going is 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 understanding what makes the original magic, right? So we we, we did do a lot of soul searching. Um, um, we we looked at all the content that had been made, every everything about it, and and we were very uh, familiar with the fan base and what they liked about the original game, and we just thought, right, okay, let's just isolate these core pillars, which was you know paradise gone to hell. <laughs> um, incredibly brutal first person combat, you know, the kind of gore um, and just sort of push that action RPG experience and, in, 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 you know, take it right down to that. Uh, and we also looked at what else was on offer out there for uh, zombie experiences, whether that's, you know, TV or games. And we thought, you know what, if we just focus on what's really important about Dead Island and that people like, we're going to come up with something that actually stands out uh, in the marketplace here as an experience and a promise to players. So so we just buckled down and it's just about, you know, keeping laser focused on that stuff and not getting distracted by more good ideas because everyone's got yeah. great ideas all the time. Like, hey, I've got a great idea, but <laughs> you know, is it going to fit? Is it, is it, is it, is it going to water the experience down or not? So we, uh, yeah, we just stayed focused basically. Um, and I, I think it's uh, it's paid off. So that's awesome. And you guys, when did you guys take on the project? If I remember correctly, it was like 2015, 2016? It's 2018. 28? Oh, 2018. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, for, for us, it's been for us, it's been a pretty normal sort of four four and a half year uh, dev cycle. Um, um, we had a, a little bit of tech in our back pocket that we've been tooling around with that was uh, that turned out to be appropriate for what we wanted to do with, with Dead Island. But other than that, it's just been a, 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 a full from from blank sheet of paper to, <laughs> to to finished article four and a half years. I guess the only um, the only real difficulty we've 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 had to struggle with is. Uh, you know, it falls right in the middle of all, you know, Gen 8, Gen 9, and all these different SKUs and different platforms. So, you know, we're really proud about the way the game scales from, you know, because it will run on 10-year-old PlayStations, <laughs> but also Gen 9. And, it's, and you know, it scales, and it's doing it smoothly as well now. So that's been the, the, the biggest technical 
uh, challenge. I mean, we've had creative challenges, and I think we've we've met those. Mm. But the, the technical is the is the one that's. And this is the same with everybody, right? At the moment, it's like it is, yeah, yeah. It's. I, uh, I, I was going to say when it comes to, because I'm not a development guy. I know nothing about development at all. So, um, when you guys develop, what do you primarily do it on PC first, and then to console, console afterwards? How does it how does it work exactly? Uh, we're kind of doing everything all together at once. I mean, PC is obviously um, our, our kind of core, as it were, because it's easy for us to iterate on quickly and, 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 and get builds uh, out to the rest of the team. Um, and, and that was doubly so uh, during the pandemic, right? So, you know, we, we had all those hurdles to overcome and it, that just makes it easier. Uh, but we're always making builds for every single platform all the time, and, and QA are always uh, dipping in and just making sure that every, everything is working, or, or, or at least moving in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of testing to make sure everything's all up and running well on release yeah. day. Um, so you mentioned that Dead Island 2 was basically like a total restart for a Dan Buster. Uh, almost everything was rebuilt from the ground up. One thing that stayed was the location, L.A. So how did the team decide what to keep and what not to keep when developing this this new Dead Island 2? Well, um, it's it's all part of the design process when you when you when you're kind of solving solving problems you set yourself and then and then the results of those solves kind of make decisions for you. So. You know, when when you've made the decision that you're going to go all out on the gore and it's going to get <laughs> really, 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 really brutally bloody, and you can literally hack these zombies into into little chunks, um, you realise that perhaps you need to balance that with a little bit of a tonal shift. And I think, um, you know, that that uh, original trailer was starting to go down that 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 avenue with 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 a slightly light, lighter tone, a bit more tongue in cheek to balance the the horror. That you're pricing in front of people, right? So, um, and we thought that LA just—it's just a fabulous location, right? You know, it's 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 the it's the paragon of of humanity, right? All the diversity, yeah. all the creativity, <laughs> all, 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 all that all that hubris, all that money, all that technology—it's just a fantastic location. And then, um, certainly from a narrative point of view and a world-building point of view, being able to put that through the Hollywood lens. And present this kind of picture postcard kind of movie, or or I as I prefer the term sort of Saturday tea time um, TV show. You know, I was a, I was a big fan of, of Saturday um, tea time TV from America. You know, whether it be A Team or Six Million Dollar Man or you know all of that stuff. You know, so um, it just gave us a really um, great opportunity to characterise both the location and and the NPCs, and then sort of give put that in juxtaposition with, with with the horror of an outbreak so you know you can get a bit of gravitas but also a bit of crazy as well you can yeah i mean from what i played you guys go crazy with it especially i, I believe i was on venice beach and just what some of you guys came up with is it's really awesome i loved it so far um but i also want to mention too um is that when you compare this to original that Alan titles, uh, some things aren't in it, like driving cars. Um, mm -hmm. It's now three-player co-op instead of four, which actually I remember back when it was originally released, it was stated to be eight-player co-op. Um, mm -hmm. So what was the decision to settle on three players for this one? Uh, basically testing, just gameplay testing, right? You know, and, and also that... Because we um, decided to get rid of human factions, you know, uh, and that's partly to do with the gore engine. <laughs> and it's, it's what I was saying earlier about sort of staying focused on what makes makes the experience right. And the experience for us is is humans versus zombies. Um, and we just found that with all the combat mechanics and how crazy that gets towards the end of the game, because you know you've got you know once you've got your top tier skill cards and your top tier. Uh, weapon mods and all the top tier curveballs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, there is a lot going on, right? You know, it gets it gets quite chaotic, and we found that beyond three players, 
not only was that obviously a heavy, you know, just a heavy load from a processing point of view and a performance, you know, we wanted to stick with 60 FPS for uh, Gen 9 and blah, blah, blah. But it also became almost <laughs> impossible to read yeah. for, for players themselves because there's so much going off, you know, the environmental bits are chaining and there's electricity arcing <laughs> everywhere and zombies are melting and exploding and you think, you know, how do you keep track of your strategy or your tactics when there's that much going on? And we just found that three three player was that sort of... Uh, Three was the magic number, I think is the phrase. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you, when it comes to doing the co-op, can you pick, so can you have multiple characters of the same in a playthrough? Or yes. You can? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I know that a lot of people had questions about that, so I wanted to make sure to sneak that one in. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. One thing I do want to touch on is, is the story. Because mm -hmm. in the original Dead Island, to put it nicely, it's kind of it's kind of just there. It's not really, the game's not really focused primarily on the story. It's mainly on mm -hmm. gameplay, making sure the player is having a fun time. Is that the same case here, or this time around, can we expect a more compelling and interesting story? How how are you guys tackling it? Uh, we've moved it on. We've moved it on slightly, so we're not going for um, hyper melodrama, but we're okay. we're. We're, we're putting in big beats. So um, what I wanted to do was, um, you know, I, I, I grew up with movies like, you know, the Aliens franchise and Predator and things like that. And I always I've always been fascinated by that that story arc where they where the uh, protagonist is is defined by what they find out about the monster, the antagonist. So, you know, if you look at the Aliens uh, franchise, it goes from, you know, um, egg, uh, face hugger, oh, chest burster. <laughs> Alien, and, and you know, all the way through the franchise, you know, the 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 monster is evolving, and that kind of defines uh, Ripley's journey. And we wanted to do something similar here with with the zombie, um, with the zombie virus, with the with, with, with the with the autophage. Um, so, I really wanted to make um, our zombies have a I don't know whether you want to call it a heart or a soul, but there's there's something there, right? And it's the relationship with the player. So, but also at the same time, we want to leave the player alone to be able to just go out and adventure. So, it's the story I think is much more of a um, an odyssey rather than than a, than a hard driven um, um, melodramatic arc, if you see what I mean. Um, and it's primarily about the world building and um, not answering all the questions. I'm not saying it's a one big mystery box, but um, all the all the answers and the potential future are there for attentive players. So it might be a throwaway line in a cutscene. It might be a journal. It might be something, some graffiti daubed on a wall. It might be all kinds of these things. And this is like a big mosaic that we're putting together to sort of tell the story of the of the zombie virus yeah. and the player, and its relationship with the player. And that's very important. So do do each of the slayers have their own separate? um mission objective because i know something like for example ryan he's looking for his brother so something like that do they all cross paths at one point how exactly does working with six different slayers affect the story especially if, when you're in co-op too how does that work okay so uh the story is the same for every single player but okay. the way that they and this is the clever bit. We're quite proud about this. Um, so you'll you'll experience the same cutscene, but each of the characters will say their own dialogue within that cutscene. So okay. uh, so you will if you view what a cutscene with one character compared to another character, there might be in the way that you react and the way you kind of question what's going on or perhaps assume what's going on, get slightly different takes. Of, of, of the truth, if you, if, if you see what I mean. Now, when it comes to the sort of the, the overarching objective, you know, like you said, Ryan trying to get back to his brother, um, that was our way of giving characters backstory that isn't too encyclopedic, right? So it's just a, a simple motivation that will pay off uh, much further on down the line. Um, uh, I think the best way to view Dead Island 2 is this is this is chapter one. Chapter one, okay. Is that a hint for more to come? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I actually did a little bit of research behind you before this interview. Um, okay. And I know you were a narrative director for games. Uh, you worked closely on Forza, Alien vs. Predator, and even had some experience at Rockstar. So how was your experience working on Dead Island 2 compared to – how was it different from your previous work that you've had? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I know I that's a loaded the... question. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we've, we've done a lot of um, – we've put a lot of effort into the world building. Um, and, and also this notion of writing six characters, right? So, um, and we've been on one, on one level quite upfront and in your face uh, with some of the narrative, but with a lot of it, we've been quite subtle. So for example, um, character selection, right? So, you know, an attentive player, when they watch the introductory cinematic and then go to character selection, we're hoping that they'll naturally choose a character that, that, that fits with them, you know, and because we've got six characters, they've, they've, they've got slightly different personalities. Mm. So, so Ryan's that, you know, um, reluctant hero, you know, he's, he's kind of like a John McClane uh, diehard kind mm. of character. You know, he's just dealing with shit. Right. And then that goes all the way through to the other end of the spectrum where you've got characters like Danny, who's this like sort of smart cutting force of nature kind of thing. Um, uh, Amy, who I know, who, who I know didn't sit well with me. You know, she's, she's a bit more of she's a bubbly, confident, she's focused right over character. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I think there's. I was able to bring a lot of experience to the table with that, and we've got a great narrative team, great lead narrative, um, uh, Aisha Khan. Um, I think the biggest challenge, though, was 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 basically lockdown. You know, it, uh, lockdown hit us uh, just as we were about to do everything. <laughs> so basically, we got one chance. We got one chance to get it all done, um, and, and we did it. And, and we're pretty proud with the with, with the with the results. Um, so, yeah, that's not that's not to say we can't improve for for uh, new content going forward. But uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, and and I think the great thing about the six characters is that. Um, once you've got used to one and you go back and replay and you choose another one, suddenly you realize the, the subtle differences. So so Bruno, for instance, is quite laid back and quite cautious, right? And he's not quite as quippy, he's not quite as jokey. But then you get to learn his character and you realize that actually he's, he's, he's making these under the radar sort of jokes and quips yeah. and, and remarks all the time. And he's a little bit more laid back kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, yeah, it's... Um, it's 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 been it's been a roller coaster ride and it's so it's going to be very good to get it out this week we can't wait to see what everyone's going to say about the, the the story particularly as well because like i say it's uh, it's um it's a set, it's it's quite a setup uh, we're, we're putting the player on a trajectory for the future perfect i'm really excited i've actually <laughs> i've had the game pre-ordered since like 2014 like way back, <laughs> way back then when like so over the years one constant thing that keeps coming up is people are saying that your your game's in development hell so how how do you respond to those criticisms and just because it, it it was for a good number of years that's what a lot of people would say and like that the game was just never coming out and here we are literally five days before release how has that mm -hmm. journey been uh, well, it's been very exciting for, uh, I mean, personally for me, I, I, I joined the studio uh, almost four years to the day uh, ago kind of thing. So, and, you know, I remember when I went to visit the studio the first time and they just showed me the, the, the Gore-Tec, the flesh engine and the location, I thought, LA, I can do LA. And this, this Gore-Tec is just awesome because, you know, I've, I've, I've just got this, you know, sixth sense for, 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 when a game mechanic is going to matter, right? You know, you need you need a unique game mechanic at the at the heart of any game, and and and, and I just looked at this and just thought, oh yeah, this is going to be this is going to be worth it, kind of thing. But like I say, the rest of it, it's just been a you know four year development cycle, um, and it's just it, it's part of entertainment, right? You know, I mean, there's numerous movies that sort of get half started, then slated, and half started, then slated, and, so, and then someone finally gets hold of it and sort of. Get, get, yeah, you know, takes it over the finishing line. 
Um, and I think that was the case here. You know, I think it's just a case that uh, um, things just weren't right. It just wasn't the right time for it to 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 be what it was going to be. Uh, and and thank God as well, because I don't think it would have turned out to be the way it has. And I think the way it has turned out is uh, is um, a good move for the uh, franchise. I think it's uh, people are going to enjoy it. Awesome. <clears throat> um, I do want to shift topics a little bit. Um, going to set up a few questions here for one. So how does uh, Dead Island 2 differ from other zombie games on the market? What really makes Dead Island stand out aside from the gore system? Because we, we all know the gore system, it's one of a kind. That's that like that you rarely see something like that in zombie games now. So what is... Aside from that, what makes your game different from others out there? Uh, that mix of world building and tone and location. I think I think there's a lot to be said for um, a game whose whose reference points and whose framing is kind of familiar to us all. I find you know as soon as you start taking zombies into too much of a kind of futuristic or fantastical setting, that perhaps sometimes you lose. You lose that relevance, mm-hmm. and 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 you, know, you only have to look at uh, Dead Island Two, any of the locations or any of the moments in it, and it is clearly us. You can, you, you can't confuse it with another uh, zombie title out there, um, which I, I think is a great achievement. Um, uh, but it's also very entertaining. You know, I just uh, I, I love that sort of LA vibe and, like I say, the Hollywood lens. Um, I think the the other big um, decision we made as well. You know, once once you realise that uh, you're really going to commit to chopping up zombies, as you said, with the flesh engine, and you realise that everything really, the whole game experience, when it's really ring, really singing to the player, is within sort of that, that five, ten metre range, then things like open world and driving cars kind of become nonsensical, right? Because you've already committed to this close-up mm-hmm. kind of thing, and that allowed us to, you know really focus and commit to making smaller levels but really highly detailed levels so uh, one thing players will experience is that you know wherever you look in this place every square meter is telling a story there is a little bit of detail there there is something that rewards the attentive and that allows us to make this kind of really rich curated sort of semi cinematic experience as well so it allows us to you know frame moments within the level as well and sort of just get that sort of picture postcard cinematic bump oh wow i'm on i'm on santa monica beach at <laughs> night there's a beautiful ferris wheel with the moon above it and you know he's put the, the art department have just um well i mean they've worked wonders really uh we've got a, we've got a great art department great great art director and the way that they've sort of just changed the whole look of the game over the last uh, four years and pushed it and pushed it, evolved it, got it looking really, you know, pushed the um, the color palette so things really pop. And you really feel like you're in a, um, you know, a classic kind of slasher movie um, all the way through the game. So, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. I was going to say, because when I was at PAX and when I played, because we only had a set amount of time, so I just looked for everything looked at every nook and cranny and there was a lot of attention to detail you guys really went all out on the interiors um because i know because it's not open world um it's 10 different districts and you can just see that you guys put the heart and soul into those 10 different or at least the districts that i played you can see that it's it paid off not going with an open world type of game here yeah, I mean, it was that's nice of you to say, uh, but I mean, I'd also have to say that um, that demo is is over a year old. So really, uh, that was yeah, that, that was the that was the Gamescom uh, uh, demo, and we haven't had time to put out another demo. So we thought, well, that was good enough. <laughs> um, and and at the time, you know, at that time we were content complete. So we've had a year to sort of improve since that demo. Uh, you know, all the hip reacts, all the balancing, particularly the uh, ranged weapons. We've been doing a lot of tuning on 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 how those work as well. Um, but that was yeah, uh, that that was our first stab at a, a fully playable demo, and it was a bit of a gamble, I think, for for a demo because we're throwing players quite a way into the game. You know, um, that was every feature kind of unlocked, and there's a lot to learn from the combat. You know. Um, yeah. 
And it was quite interesting to see, you know, you'd sit there and see lots of different um, uh, journalists playing through the demo. And some people would just get stuck on spamming, right? Spam, 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 spam. And then you'd see other journos sort of go, oh, actually, right, I'm getting into this. And yeah. you'd start seeing that dance of death come out and that kind of whoop, bop bit. But we like to, I mean, we oh, one, of the, one of the things that was our inspiration, there's a great um, fight in, uh, have you seen Kingsman? There's a big fight in this church. Yes, the, the first one, right? ridiculous choreographed yeah. bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> And that's kind of where we're starting to push the, the zombie combat. And and towards the end of the game, when you get you you know you're starting to get you're starting to understand all these mechanics, and that they're not just simple mechanics. They all fit together, and they're a way of managing the 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 ensuing dance of death when you get good at it. I mean, my favourite is uh, is still um, brass knuckles and and and. The dodge skill because you feel like you are ducking in and out and sort of bop 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 and then out and back and then back in again sort of thing um but yeah yeah so um yeah but we've all the locations there is there is so much world building and uh, uh so if you're an attentive player keep your eyes open and uh, get chatting online about what what you think is really going on with the story interesting the little little hints and secrets to uh original dead island and dead island riptide in there somewhere <laughs> are there are we they're canon right i believe you said that in a yeah. recent interview yeah yeah i mean we made that statement by including sam b in the game right so so well, on one level we are starting the, the the game for a new generation right you don't mm -hmm. need to have played the, the original games so we're sort of giving you six new heroes etc but you know just sam b being there um not answering all the questions <laughs> is kind of about the way we've gone his his backstory because i've seen the news posts i've seen his little twitter inter interactions and everything it yeah. looks like he has a much bigger role than i anticipated um i know he has a he has a love interest with emma or he used to have a love interest with emma so there there's a lot more in there than i thought there would be um which is quite exciting because a lot yeah. of people love that. I mean, in in a way, Emma and Sam is is the main story arc, really. You're you're witnessing their story arc. They're they're, they're the kind of uh, uh, the star-crossed lovers, as it were. Um, <laughs> Could you go into a little bit more about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Too many spoilers. Too many spoilers. <laughs> too many spoilers. Uh, but. But uh, let, let's just say that the, the, the real story that, that finds kind of completion in Dead Island 2 is, is Emma and Sam. Uh, but the player's story is, is just beginning. Perfect. Um, I, do, I do have one right here. I'm curious to hear. How is Dead Island 2 unique from Dying Light? <laughs> uh, we, we, focus, we focus on the zombies. It's, it's about you versus the monster and 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 what that what that struggle means both narratively and from a a, a gameplay point of view um you know i, I find that a, a lot of zombie um um ips out there they they just use the zombie apocalypse as an excuse for human human drama you know and it's and and there's also been an awful lot of this you know this this dirge that humanity is awful and we deserve everything we get kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. In our game, you know, humans are, yes, flawed, yes, a bit batshit crazy or full of hubris or narcissistic or whatever, but we're the good guys, right? You know, uh, and, and, you know, we mourn the loss of civilization and L.A., and, you know, we're the good guys fighting the bad guys, and the whole point is is that you're 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 learning what that means and, and, and what the zombie, um, what the autophage, the zombie virus is and and ultimately um, how to beat it. Yeah, because um, like you said, primarily zombies, there's no human enemies. Um, one thing that I read on a little bit ago is that when you guys went about doing your uh, level design, you try to put the player into a fight as often as possible which is one thing that i vastly appreciated so i was hoping you can share a little bit more about how exactly you achieved something like that 
Uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, that is absolutely true. And, and when you're not in a fight, that's an intentional pacing moment to give to give you a break. Because mm. uh, 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 it is, you know, the combat is intense. It, it is intense. Uh, and, and the better you get at it, the more intense it becomes. It's uh, uh, really rewarding. Um, so... You know, we have little moments where you're perhaps investigating, or we do a little uh, another bit of uh, narrative exposition, or you're you you are simply sort of um, absorbing uh, your surroundings and setting the scene for the next moment, kind of thing. But yes, it's it's essentially a series of uh, zombie brawling, um, and 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 that's what we wanted the experience to be because the, the fundamental mechanic core mechanic of the fighting is 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 fun and involving and 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 really deep i mean my own personal journey with uh, with um <laughs> learning how to play the game was i started off as what i called the feckless coward and i was the guy you know running around a car being chased by zombies <laughs> uh, with my last broken stick kind of thing. And it, it took me a couple of weeks to just go right no come on just get stuck in and then as soon as you start getting stuck in you know, it becomes more and more rewarding. And you go, ah, oh, right, now now I understand the game look. Ah, oh, now I understand the economics. I understand, boom, 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 boom. And then I think as a player, I'm naturally one of these kind of uh, dodge, keep things at bay, kind of blah, 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 kind of characters. And I played like that for a while. And then I went back and started playing other characters and went, right, no, okay, let's have a go at this tank. Uh, character let's let let's let's spec the skill cards and so stick in there with the block and blah, blah blah and i realized that i'd actually been missing a considerable amount of the game because when you're when you're dodging and dancing around you're actually pulling away from and avoiding a lot of the in, in your face gore and horror of it all and i found that when you're using uh, block and sort of getting stuck in there and just standing your ground all of a sudden it's uh, you know the uh, the game uh, the game experience changes. Um, so yeah, uh, and just ask anybody in the office. Uh, you know, when we've obviously we've been playing this game for <laughs> for four years now, and and everyone has their own favourite combo of skill cards and and weapon types and 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 and, and mods and things like that. So um, it really is one of these games that's like sort of it's 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 like. It's like a football, right? You know, many but you can give a football to anybody, and they'll play f with it for hours and invent their own games. And it's kind of that that kind of core gameplay experience. Um, so yeah, it's it's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and when you pair it with the gore, it's just it's just incredible. Like I said, it's probably the the goriest zombie game that I've ever played. And call me a psychopath, but I absolutely adored it. It was phenomenal. <laughs> um, for for people that have that know nothing about the gore, can you mm. can you ele elevator pitch it to them right now in like thirty seconds, like a yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we've we've modeled skin, fat, muscle, bone, brains, <laughs> uh, and the whole system is procedural, right? So wherever you hit the zombie, that's where you see the effects. And then, and it's and it's not just a range of melee effects either. So even though you know we've we've, we've modelled uh, slashing, bludgeoning, uh, crushing, stabbing, maybe. but on top of that we've also got you know burning, um, electrocuting, <laughs> uh, and and probably my favourite are the caustic effects, the uh, the uh, um, caustic X, which is a chemical in the game that the uh, military used to. Uh, dissolve bodies when they were trying to get oh, rid of man. all the bodies in, in, the, in the so so i mean to this day i still kind of stop and, and ogle with awe as uh, i i let off like a, a caustic grenade or something like that and the zombies are coming towards me and the flesh is just dripping <laughs> off their bones and they slowly kind of dismantle into skeletons and eventually kind of if you've timed it right collapse at your feet kind of thing but it's kind of oh <laughs> So, yeah. was the was game development built around that gore system so was it always something that mm. you guys knew you wanted to be in the game from the very beginning and then develop around that yeah yeah because okay th there is an rpg system right there are there are hit points and damage points and things like that and you can have the hood on but you can turn all of that off 
and you can still play the game and make tactical and strategic decisions in in your combat and understand what's going on. And actually, it's kind it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a soft difficulty level, and it does actually change the way you play the game because I mean, it, well, for me personally, I find I found that when I play with the hood on and you can see numbers, you tend to be completionist about it. Whereas if you turn it all off, you tend to have a much more realistic and real life approach to fighting zombies in that you don't really care about a zombie if it's on the ground with its legs chopped off and isn't a threat. You're not really that bothered about finishing it off kind of thing. Uh, and so you do start thinking much more tactically. You know, if, 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 if you're afraid of getting grappled by a zombie, cut its arms off so it can't grapple you. If, if, if you're afraid of a zombie sort of tracking you down if the numbers are building and you've just got to get through this room cut off their legs or you know set up a trap or you know have a look at the environment and see what you can do there uh, trap wise because obviously the environment is riddled with all these environmental sandbox elements as well so every time you go into an environment you can you you start getting good at just clocking where all the bits and bobs are and go ah oh, right okay i can do that there do that there drop that there flip that there kick the zombie backwards <laughs> that way you know um yeah yeah um i know we're running on time a little bit so i do want to okay. fast rapid action some questions real quick uh okay about release and everything um uh how long is the main story and how long would 100 percent completion be for dead island 2 oh gosh. rough estimate uh, of things if you knew what you were doing and you were sprinting through, it's it's about 12 to 15 hours to get to the end of the main story. Um, but easily, you can you can easily add 10 hours on top of that uh, if you want to complete everything. Probably more like add 20 hours. I mean, you know, uh, so some of the side content, it, it, it doesn't really um, hold your hand as much. So there are things like treasure hunts where you would find something in the world and that will give you a clue and then that will, you know, you follow the clues from mm -hmm. uh, district to district to to find the treasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and, and there's also quite a lot of that side content that uh, un only unlocks after you've completed the story as well. So, you know, you're encouraged to go back to the different districts and experience them at a different time of day and things like that. And, uh, and then how long um, would you say for everything in the game every nook and cranny oh, gosh you know what i don't i don't know i mean it that you know when you start talking about sort of 30 plus hours you know that that's just down to um uh your, your own play style mm -hmm. um like i say i mean every single house is explorable you know every single house has secrets in it every single house will have um perhaps a lockbox or a safe in there for which you have to find a key and that key is dropped by a named zombie and you to find that named zombie you have to look, figure out who used to live here and then track them down in the neighborhood or there might be a clue to say that they've gone and um you know followed the evac uh, process to another district kind of thing so it's all about putting those clues together and following the world building perfect um so what type of content could well, well, sorry. What type of content will Dead Island 2 be releasing after launch? Will there be any sort of roadmap, uh, community events? I know you have two DLCs planned, but aside mm. from those two story DLCs, uh, what could players be expecting? Uh, we're not going to announce that yet. We're not okay. talking about that. <laughs> yet. Getting our ducks in the row for that so we can do that properly. But yes, you're right. There are two story expansions. Perfect. Um, what about any New Game Plus photo mode options? Anything like that on the table currently? Uh, it's on the table. We want to do it, uh, but we're just prioritizing at the moment. So uh, that, that'll be part of the, the greater DLC announce. Gotcha. And what does the future of the franchise look like? Is uh, a Dead Island 3 on the horizon? Any Dead Island spin-off games planned? Maybe even beyond games? Maybe movies or animations? anything to expand the franchise further uh we would hope so and that's all we're saying <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> um and lastly i always like to end with one final question to you 
Um, do you have anything else you would like to say to the viewers watching back at home? Your last final message before release. What do you got for us? Uh, yes, I, I would just say get stuck in, right? Don't hold back like I did when I started playing the game. It isn't about survival. It's about it isn't about surviving. It's about thriving, right? You're a hero. You're the kind of guy who swaggers down the middle of the street and gets stuck in, right? So, so do that and you'll get the most from the game. All right. Thank you so much, James, for coming on to the channel. I vastly appreciated you taking the time and having this conversation. I, I know your game releases in, in five days, so everybody yeah. back at home, pick it up if you enjoy it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Mario.